Unfortunately for the year, no, it's not unfortunate. I'm working on my uh, power wall. Here is one of the battery banks. Uh, this is a 3S 10P litter car, a 5000 milliamp watt sits. These these battery cells they won't handle the current that they're supposed to so the only thing I can use them for is a power wall which was my intention anyway. Uh, the lead acid battery that I've been using for the last 12-18 months, in fact I think it's about three years old, is near enough at it. It used to power loads of things, now it doesn't even power my laptop. That's a completed one, that's a quarter of it so I've got four of those to make. Uh, this is an un un unassembled one, all I've put is the battery terminals on. This is a partly assembled one. What I do is, this is just normal twin and earth, household twin and earth. All I do is I strip the wire out, strip the copper out, thread it through there, solder it on and then I can push those down so as it doesn't melt, melt the plastic when I can get them down like that and then what I do is I get another piece and then I run it, run it across there uh, somehow when I can get it in place I like that and I solder that in position just to share the load a bit these things they're not going to handle they're not going to be running that much current I think the maximum on my uh, current load is I think it's about 400 watts is the maximum I draw so two parallel lines is absolutely plenty then I run that through there through the holes because there are holes on it I run that through the holes solder it up and then here's a completed one then you put your batteries in oh the other thing I've done as well on the negative terminals I've put a blob of solder the contact area is only raised by about half a millimeter so I've increased that that's that's helped it a hell of a lot I found out that when I was putting these things in parallel the two or three of them weren't connected which isn't very good I've got 12 of these to do in total I've got another four this should be eight one two three four five and then three on there so that's eight I've got another four printing now which will be done tonight. These are all the ones for the second battery, the second pack. So as I've shown before, what I do is I get um, a wire and I thread it through and then I can pull these all down because otherwise it melts the plastic. So you've got to be bloody careful obviously because this is plastic. Uh, and then I pull them all down, put them into position and then I solder a nice, um, run across the bottom of it so that's all those done now the first thing I do is try and find the bits <laughs> I ain't got enough I don't believe this I thought I'd ordered enough you know those old bollocks moments that you get in life just here's another one I haven't ordered enough standoffs so I can't finish it uh, I can put two what three layers I can do three but that's all I can do the other three I'll have to wait until the new standoffs uh, actually come in I thought about it the other day and then I thought no I don't need them but I did I'm going to get the other battery which is partly mostly made it is built Tony right hang on there's the battery so that goes on there does it yes that goes on there another standoff I mean this isn't it's not the sturdiest of things you know, it does move but obviously once it's in place it ain't going to move again pliers so really I should have a bloody hex driver for this bloody pliers need to test the voltage 
they should all be the same. I think I've tested these before, but I'll test them again. As long as the voltages are all the same, you're okay. Because I can balance the pack after. Now when you're putting these things in, obviously they're in parallel, uh, you've only got one chance to get it right. You know, it's like, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again, so skydiving just isn't for you. You've got to make sure that this is 100% right, because otherwise you're going to pop the battery as soon as you actually connect it, if it's the wrong way around. As you can hear, things start cracking. Clean all the mess off. I should cl bloody clean these up properly. Okay, that's one layer done. Then I reverse it. So positives on this side on this layer and then positives on that side on the next layer. That one done. So the next one is positive. Another one done, um, and another layer to do, which goes that way. Another row done, positive to me this time. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to get my M4 nut, just for today because my other one should be here tomorrow. Just to make sure that this thing stays together. Right, that's that one done. Um, so now I'm going to tip it on its side and then I'm going to start wiring again. Oh, this is getting heavy. I think I'm going to take these off. Let's just make sure we've got positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Oh dear. Can you spot the mistake? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> what have I done?
Right, try again. Negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, and then that one will be that way, like that. So, I've now got to wire everything up. So I'll do, the first thing I'll do is the series links. So I'll put um, from there to there, and then from there to there, and then on the other side I'll do the same again. And I think I'm just going to wire all this in one big loom and just have one connector rather than having these, oh, I don't know. Now if I link them, and then just have, I might get, I'll get, I'll get some heavier gauge, put a 60 uh, XT90 on there. This is really pissing me off now. I've got it wrong again. So what we have here, we've got a series link going across these which I've got to put another one there and then there's going to be another one there and then the other side is going to be opposite, obviously the opposite ones. Now I've got to do a parallel link as well which is going to go from there to there and then we're going to go from there to there and then from there to the... no we're not. Oh, before I put it up right it's done. It's taken me a long 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 time. I haven't... actually I haven't finished it. Um, I've still got the cable ties to put along here in various places. I've done this bit here. Uh, I've still got to do the middle and the end to stop these things from bowing out too much. Apart from that, on the standoffs this is still, it's just held on with cable ties there and there until my standoffs turn up tomorrow but I, th I wanted to get this done today so I'm going to try and stand it up without breaking it right if I can turn that that way <laughs> those of you that have watched in the past will recognise this, this is um basically a BMS that I did. It's a battery monitoring system, not a battery management system that I never actually finished along with a lot of projects that I started. All you do is you plug it in and it tells you the voltage. Now there's a lot more that I'm going to add to it than this but it's actually it's working perfectly now. What it does, it filters. The reason why it takes so long to go up, it filters um, the A to D that's actually coming into the Arduino, which is there, which is flashing away. Uh, it draws about I think it was 46 milliamps. That's all. That's with the screen on and everything running. So I may actually leave it switched on. At the minute it's only a, only a 3S board, I've put LEDs on there because I wanted to do balancing and stuff like that. Um, they are AT Tiny 85s, they are up to isolators, they are MOSFETs and I can't remember where I put them on there. <laughs> I think they were to turn the LEDs on and also I'm going to put resistors on there so I can do a balanced discharge. Or I may be able to do a balanced switch so as if one cell say that one's reading 4.14 that one's reading 4.16 it'll actually take the power out of that one and put it into that one that's the idea anyway but I don't know if I can do it yet what I'm going to do now is get someone else out and it ain't what you think unfortunately fortunately sorry this is the HTRC T240 Duo which is good 240 watts total that's shared between the two ports. So it's a normal, it's a, it's a balanced charger. It does charging, discharging, balancing, every kind of lipo, lithium ion, LIHV, NICAD, metal, sorry, lead acid, everything. I've been playing with this for a couple of weeks. It is a bloody good charger. For the price, you can't beat it. 
So if I plug my battery in now, uh, actually we'll go back to monitor and I've got to try and get this in here. I should have made this balance lead a bit longer. In fact I should have made it a lot longer. As you can see it tells you what the capacity of the batteries are. And if I select balance, it'll automatically balance it, which is going to take a long time on this battery pack. What's this? A 200, 200 ampere hour, two and a half kilowatt hour battery. So if I go back and I go back and I go lithium iron, which is probably only going to charge to 4.1 volts, which I don't want. I want it on 4.2 volts. I'll set that to 4.2, 3S, 10 amps. It's 10 amps. Uh, that's 110, yeah, I can do that. Start. And it gives a nice graph. This charge has even got a calibration uh, function on it. You can actually calibrate the voltage. So if you put your um, put your meter on there, calibrated meter, which I've got somewhere, um, you can actually adjust the calibration. I'm going to actually charge this as a LiPo because it will do 4.2 volts, that's what I want the battery set at. Um, start. So you get a nice graph when it's going along. Or you can monitor just the cells. For the price, you can't beat it. You really can't. Anyway, there's a, I'm going to leave a link in the description for this thing. It's brilliant as a portable charge. It's got a touch screen and it's colour fantastic so this battery is nearly done I've got to wait for the standoffs to turn up then I'm going to cover it with some uh, the reason being I just want to isolate the sides I want to protect the sides why does that start now I want to protect oh it also does internal resistance still got to put the standoffs on I've still got to cover it with some I've still got to finish all the cable ties and then I'm going to hook it up to my solar It'll never pay for itself, it's a hobby, I don't give a shit. I'm all those people looking at it and they're like, where's the fuse? Where's this? Where's that? 